jointly. They search further down the river. We've been searching another part of the river. But at the moment, there's nothing to see, I'm afraid. Hey everybody, this is Sunny Justice with It's a Cramming Shame. Now, of course, before we get into this video, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing and hit that like and the share. Now, in this Nicola Bully video, we are going to be talking about Peter Falding and the river search. We're going to go over things that Peter Falding has said amongst looking at, of course, visuals as well. And then we're going to discuss it in the comment section of this video. You guys are going to leave your comments should you desire so about this particular video. You guys, and don't forget that tomorrow night at 7 p.m., the UK time, that Claire and myself and possibly John from Crime Scene to Courtroom will be joining us for the live. And remember the footage that Claire and I covered. Now, we'll talk about that in tomorrow's video, so don't forget to hit the notification as soon as in a little while that I put up the thumbnail for it. Thank you guys so much. Now, let's get into this video. Okay, so do you guys remember when I put out a video and I was talking about the different searchers, about a police search versus someone like Peter Falding or people that literally do this as their life career where they do search and rescue and what the difference is? Well, I'm going to show you parts of this clip where Peter Falding that I didn't realize in one video, or at least it's a video I haven't seen for quite a while, was actually talking about this. And like he says too that it really is a matter of who the operator is, that they don't have those same resources. So is this the reason why Nicola Bully possibly got missent? Again, we're gonna talk about it in the comment section. So no developments. Um, you've done this for a long, long time. Um, and I just want to deliver the truth as best as we can. W what is your gut feeling? Do you think that this poor lady is in the river? Are you planning to continue this search for a number of more days. What's the mindset, Pete? Yeah, well, it's, it's a baffling one, Jeremy. I was talking to the police this afternoon and with the police search advisors, we went to the bench where, you know, Nicola disappeared, where supposedly they were, where a mobile phone was found. And the police divers were on scene that afternoon by, by the, where the day she went missing, they were in the water searching. The river is not moving fast. And I, after 24, 25 years of doing this type of work and hundreds of cases, I am totally baffled because the divers, normally you would expect put a diver in. People, if they drown, they generally go down where they are. We normally find them within sort of five to 10 meters of where they went down, even after a few days. This is the most baffling case I've ever worked on. You've been widely reported, Peter, as saying that, that the investigation was a mess. Uh, you know, and that it's a difficult one, a really difficult one. Somebody was telling me, and I, I could be factually wrong, but the dog wasn't wet, the collar was off the dog, the ball wasn't wet. It, it really is a mystery. Hey, did you guys catch that? The reporter there was talking about the ball not being wet. I wonder where that reporter got his misinformation or information from. Well, I've, I've got total faith in the police dive team. We work with them all the time. So, uh, you know, the, the, I think, Jeremy, after I heard today where, how the police were here so quickly to search that area where it's believed where Nicola went in, I personally don't think she's in the river. That's just my gut instinct at this point. I may be proved wrong later on, but the police have done a fantastic search already with their existing resources, plus their sonar. Now we've got our sonar. We're searching where the bench is tomorrow up the river. So we're going to go back over that area. Not that the police haven't done it, but we're just going to go further up the river tomorrow to try and, you know, rule this river out. And then if Nicola's not here... Uh, I Nicola is in the river. Why has it taken so long to find her? That's what I'm surprised about, Jonathan. I mean, normally um, when we scan a river, we can scan about 10 miles a day with our high frequency sonar. It is the best in the world we have available. I mean, 53,000 pounds worth of equipment, but it finds people quickly and then recovered by divers. This is not a really um, fast moving tidal river. It's quite slow. It's moving slowly. It's quite narrow. So quite straightforward to search. I mean, the police divers are doing a great job, but they can only search a small section at a time but i believe from the news reports that sonar has been brought in but sonar is as only good as the operator using it 
and the frequency. Okay, you guys, so that's exactly what I'm talking about. And that's what I had in that one video I did with police searches versus uh, professional searches. Now, again, I didn't really realize that Peter Falding had talked about this in a video because there was so many videos out there. But that was exactly the point, is that the equipment is only good as the operator... The equipment is only as good as the operator using it. So again, like I said in my previous video, when police searchers go out, that's not an everyday thing that they do all the time. It's only when they're called to certain crimes or somebody's missing in the water. Whereas someone like Peter Falding or someone like Chaos Divers, when they do searches, like this is their exact experience and their forte. There's a huge difference in the equipment that's being used by people that do this as part of their regular everyday living and versus the police that get called at certain times. And that's really just reiterating what Peter Falding had said. So is that why Nicola Bully wasn't found? Could that possibly be the reason? It's just that they had a smaller area that they could only search. They brought in sonar later and they just simply missed her. Again, we can talk about this stuff all day long. It's just very mind baffling. So I want to quickly just touch on a comment that was made on one of the videos. And I'm just going to call you John. Well, that's the name that you used. And John, you made this comment about the fact of that you feel like me and Curtis are being disingenuous, that the water was a different level, and basically that we were being disingenuous in our intentions. Well, first of all, I'm not going to speak for Curtis Media. I'm just going to speak for myself here. So it is not just about the river. No matter what, even if that river was a little bit higher, which we know it was, there are still spots in there that you can tell, even looking at the water still, that it's not very deep. So the point becomes, it's not just about the river, John. It's about how many times can somebody sit there and go up and down that river searching for Nicola, that there's all these obstacles and barriers in the way, regardless if the water is low or not. It is becomes the point that they couldn't find her regardless. So there was nothing there. Her jacket didn't get caught. Nothing was found. The river was low in a lot of spots and that she didn't get hung up on anything. So how does that happen? That's the point. So I would never use the word for me ever being disingenuous. I'm not disingenuous when I do anything. So I just wanted to sit there and comment back to that because it wasn't just about the water, John. It's about the whole part of the whole search that didn't find Nicola Bully. I worked on a case on Damien Tudge in Wales where he was missing for 18 months. It was searched 12 times with the sonar and they missed him. I found him in 10 minutes when I was called in to find him in, in his car. So it depends on the operator. It depends on the equipment. So we mustn't get sidetracked with the, you know, it's been searched with sonar. It just depends on, on, on the kit, what's being used. Yeah, just uh, give us a bit more detail because it is fascinating technology, this, uh, this underwater sonar. Just, just talk me through how it works. What it is, Jonathan, you tie, tow a missile, like a, miss, a big yellow missile type object behind the boat on a short cable. It sends sound waves across the seabed or riverbed, and then it hits an object and brings a return in. Now, because our, ours is 1800 kilohertz, it gives me a crystal clear image of the bottom of the river, every stick, every stone laying on the bottom. And if we hit a target, we can actually measure that target. And a body, if there's a body in a river, and hopefully Nicola's not, but it, it, it will show a head, arm, legs, it shows everything. And then we can then pinpoint it. It's a, the best piece of equipment for search in water. I've heard under, underwater drones are being used, but an underwater drone is effectively a remote operated vehicle on a cable. And you can not you can easily miss areas and obviously it's poor visibility. And they're not very effective. Sonar is the best way of searching a river. <clears throat> And you've worked with police forces uh, before. You have links with your local police force, I understand. And, and you have been called on at times to, to help because of your expertise and the equipment that you have. 
Well, we have contracts with Kent's, Kent Police, Exeter Police, Surrey, Sussex, Thames Valley and Hampshire. We are the police dive team. We are the dive team for the whole of the South East, excluding the Met who cover London. So we are constantly called and, we are, we, and that's what we do. We average about 10 drownings every year where we cover the bodies of drowning victims, suicide victims and search on for murder victims as well, both on land and in water. So we are top of our game in that particular area. And if you were part of the team here, uh, what advice would you be giving now? What would be uh, uh, your priority? Well, I would be looking firstly, at, you know, is the, the evidence we've got is a phone. Everything's drawn to the river at the moment. Obviously, we would put our, our sonar in. I've worked on cases where there was a shoe left on the river and it was left as a decoy. We don't know if this has been left by a third party or Nicola as a decoy to drag all the resources down to the river's edge. And I'd be looking at that very clearly um, how it's got there in the first place. But I would run a, our sonar along the river and I would just see every part of that river and you could quickly confirm or deny any anomalies in that river. Well, perhaps your expertise is uh, something that could be uh, drawn on uh, in this case, which uh, now, as we say, is into its ninth day. Uh, Peter Folding, uh, great to get uh, your thoughts. Thank you uh, very much uh, once again. Good to speak to you. ...which was next to the river. But what makes this investigation, this search, so baffling and confusing, if you like, is she works as a mortgage advisor and she'd logged on to... A meeting, a Teams meeting, we all, we're all familiar with this. And for some reason, when her phone was found, she was still logged into the meeting. And almost, well, at the start of this investigation, police ruled out a third person being involved. Last week, they said that they now, their hypothesis is that she fell in the river. And we had this next guest on last week saying, if she'd fallen into the river, there's a really good chance they would have found her by last week. He said that maybe their technology, there could be issues, but he's going to go in to help. And he did that. And we speak, can speak to him now. It's Peter Folding. Uh, Peter, thank you so much uh, for joining me again. We really, really, really do appreciate it, honestly. Alan, uh, for Alan Gullis, actually, you're, uh, you're a forensic search and rescue specialist. And I've got to say, how did uh, your search go? Well, we, uh, Claudia Eliza, we searched, good afternoon, we searched from, we covered the area around the bench. Now, that's where Nicola's phone was found. Now, what we've got to bear in mind here, that was searched once on the day, in the afternoon, extremely thoroughly by police divers. Now, at the bottom of the bank where the phone was found, it... You guys caught that slip too, right? When he says at the bottom of the bank where the phone was found? It's actually only a bit deep onto a, some rocks. So it's, it's an odd one, and um, the, it was covered by police divers. We searched thoroughly down to just before the weir, and then we searched a mile also upstream, just in case anything was missed, but thoroughly with high-sensitivity sen side-scan sonar, and then we went down to the first bridge, again, looking thoroughly down there, and, and we can't find anything. The police divers couldn't find anything where she went missing. Um, so this is an odd one. And then, uh, towards the end of last week, police said that they will now start looking the coast side, looking more into the sea. You know, how likely is it, you know, yeah, God we willing... We normally find them where they go down or within a few metres, unless there's really strong flood water. Now, I was then there 10 days after the search, search and started by the police, and the family said the river was not moving fast at all on the day. Um, the police confirmed from the environment agency that it was a foot, foot more. So that means there was about two foot of water at the bottom of the bank where um, Nicola supposedly went in. And again, it was searched thoroughly by police divers. So I, to get all the way down over a weir in slow moving water, right the way around about 200 metres, I just can't see it. And again, search in the sea, it, it's interesting. Whenever you see sea searches going on, the RNL, I do it they give up after a couple of days because they know you're not going to find a body at sea. It'll either be washed on a beach, it'll float up somewhere miles down the coastline. So you're not just going to find someone floating around in an estuary. A journalist. What, what, in terms of the area though, Peter, how, what is it like? The area where, where she was or where the, the bench 
the phone was found on the bench and where the dog was, you know, how likely is it, how easy is it for somebody to fall? Is it very steep? If you fall, you know, would you fall into the river? Or could, you know, is there a chance you could get up? But what is the area mm. like exactly? Well, if, if Nicola slipped down the bank, she would end, end up with a, a, a water just up probably uh, to the top of her legs. Oh. If she went out into the middle, it's about three and a half, four metres deep. But to get down, the bench is quite a way back. So to actually get into the river, you would have to be pushed very hard or knocked out and shoved in the river. Um, or you, very unlikely that, I mean, the dog was dry here. So she hasn't, uh, you know, I don't believe that she's just slipped down the bank. She was a very cautious lady talking to the family. She was a creature of habit, absolute creature of habit. And from a Strava data, the family said, Heather in the family said, she does not ever go near that river. She's really cautious. She takes the same route every morning. Yeah, every morning, total creature of habit here. And this is what doesn't stack up. None mm. of this stacks up at all. Okay, you guys, so this was something to think about. There's kind of like two scenarios or two things going on here. So it's either that the police, like Peter Falding said, and like I said in my previous video, that you're only as good as the equipment that you're using and you're only as good as the person using it. So is this something like, hey, so if Peter Falding arrives like 10 days after, was perhaps Nicola Bully already past the point of the weir where that really wasn't his search area? that they had checked the area where they were supposed to and she was not there, right? That could be absolutely true. So that would mean that the police that searched the area then missed her because they didn't have the capability or the right person manning that sonar and like he said, frequency. Or we can go to the part at the end here where like Peter Falding says, that Nicola Bully was a creature of habit and that her family said that she didn't go near the water, near the river. So, you know, this could be taken two ways, however you want to see it. So put your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Again, let me know if you feel like that basically she was missed and that because she was missed, Peter folding the area that he checked, that she wasn't in that area because she had moved past that point? Or is it simply that Nicola Bully is a creature of habit? She didn't go near that water and that perhaps, like some people think, that she was placed in the water after the fact. Again, I can tell and you guys can tell too by the video footage that at that point the water is higher. But again, taking into account that even though the water is darker because it's a more, you know, it's not like it's a bright sunny day. So taking into account, of course, that the water is not going to raise that much. There's still going to be all these low areas, even if you don't see them as low as you do now. Because obviously in wintertime, the water's flowing more, at least like where I live, out of the mountains more, comes down, you know, and it's faster flowing typically, but it's deeper. And then, of course, as summertime comes, then it's slower and it's not as fast and it's not as deep. So you guys, again, put your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Tell me what you guys think. I just wanted to re-go over this with you guys and to what Peter Falding had said. And if you don't mind, again, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing and please hit that like and the share. God bless and you guys have a great day and we'll see you on tomorrow night's live.